Thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Not here for high and holy things we render thanks to thee, but for the common things of earth, the purple pageantry of dawning and of dying days, the splendor of the sea, the royal robes of autumn moors, the golden gates of spring, the velvet of soft summer nights, the silver glistening of all the million million stars, the silent song they sing, of faith and hope and love undimmed, undying still through death, the resurrection of the world, what time there comes the breath of dawn that rustles through the trees and that clear voice that saith awake awake to love and work the lark is in the sky the fields are wet with diamond dew the worlds awake to cry their blessing of the lord of life as he goes meekly by come let thy voice be one with theirs shout with their shouts of praise see how the giant sun soars up great lord of years and days so let the love of jesus come and set thy soul ablaze to give and give and give again what god hath given thee to spend thyself nor count the cost to serve right gloriously the god who gave all worlds that are and all that are to be dearly beloved the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses not concealing them from our heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty God, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have fl followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me, and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, 
for they have not known my ways of whom i swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest worship the lord in the beauty of holiness o come let us adore him the portion of the psalter to be read for today are psalms five and six psalm five give ear to my words o lord consider my meditation o hearken into the voice of my calling my king and my god for unto you will i make my prayer my voice shall you hear in the morning o lord early in the morning will i direct my prayer unto you and will look up for you are not a god who has pleasure in wickedness neither shall any evil dwell with you the boastful shall not stand in your sight for you hate all those who work inequity you shall destroy those who speak lies the lord will abhor the bloodthirsty and the deceitful but as for me through the multitude of your mercies i will come into your house and in reverence will i bow myself toward your holy temple lead me o lord in your righteousness because of my enemies make your way straight before my face for there is no faithfulness in their mouth their heart is eaten up with wickedness their throat is an open sepulchre they flatter with their tongue declare them guilty o god let them fall because of their own devices because of the multitude of their transgressions cast them out for they have rebelled against you but let all those who put their trust in you rejoice let them ever give thanks because you defend them those who love your name shall be joyful in you for you lord will give your blessing unto the righteous and with your favorable kindness you will defend him as with a shield psalm six o lord rebuke me not in your indignation neither cha chasten me in your displeasure have mercy upon me o lord for i am weak o lord heal me for my bones are racked my soul is greatly troubled but lord how long will you punish me turn o lord and deliver my soul o save me from your mercy for your mercy's sake for in death no one remembers you and who will give you thanks in the grave i am weary with my groaning every night i flood my bed and drench my couch with tears my eyes have become dim because of trouble and worn away because of all my enemies away with me all you who work wickedness for the lord has heard the voice of my weeping the lord has heard my petition the lord will receive my prayer all my enemies shall be confounded and greatly vexed they shall be turned back and put to shame suddenly glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen a reading from the prophet Jonah, chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. Now the Lord God appointed a plant and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came upon the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, Yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, You pity the plant, for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and, and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, 
that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have proposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until it all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and ever and forevermore. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as Christians, we are on a mission, a mission from God. That mission is expressed throughout the Bible, including the Beatitudes, which we heard in Matthew's Gospel reading this morning. This mission statement is a rule book or a map for our Christian life. The Beatitudes are the good news of transforming grace. The Beatitudes are the start of the Sermon on the Mount. The Beatitudes put the demands of the sermon in focus by starting it with a proclamation of grace. The Beatitudes tell us that we are to lead exemplary lives. Those who lead such lives will receive God's blessing. In return, they recognize God as a source of this blessing. 
Jesus said, blessed are the poor and the pure. Was he recommending poverty and piousness? I don't think so. He was advising reconciliation of need and singleness of heart. He was saying to those who have nothing and those who have everything, you have spiritual needs that things will never satisfy. He was saying that no person can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and money. He was saying that we are blessed to be a blessing to others. It would be a great day in our Christian faith if we brought all our possessions and all the things that we have under the leadership of Jesus Christ. Is that not our call? Our possessions are a blessing from God. Brothers and sisters, the Beatitudes might seem to be out of touch with the reality of our modern world. They seem to be out of touch because they go against things that the world sees as important. Power, wealth, ruthlessness, oppression, and greed. I can picture our former president, Donald Trump, coming up with a list of Beatitudes for the real world. They would probably look like this. Blessed are the rich and famous, for they shall have what they want. Blessed are the powerful, for their will shall be done. Blessed are the strong and young, for they shall draw a lot of attention to themselves. Blessed are the white and the well-educated, for they shall own the earth. It should be no surprise, brothers and sisters, that Jesus emphasizes things that are the exact opposite. Meekness, humility, poverty in spirit, care, and compassion. Jesus set the example for us to follow by always challenging the status quo. The radical ideas he and the disciples supported led to persecution and death, and Christians today who support the same ideas today also must be prepared to face similar discrimination. Nevertheless, God stands with those who follow the Christian life and will have the support and blessing of Christ. The Beatitudes are more than just good principles to live by. They are God's way to get us to think of more than what goes on around us and within us. God uses the Beatitudes to give us more than we are capable of appreciating and to ask more than we think we are capable of doing. The Beatitudes are God's way of speaking to us now on what he wants us to know. Matthew's version of the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus' inaugural address in which he lays out his vision of life in the kingdom of heaven. The Beatitudes are ethical principles that describe how things will be reversed in the kingdom. It is a serious risk to be merciful, to keep one's heart pure, and to make peace with one's enemies. The greatest risk is to confuse privilege and self-protection with the good life. When we come to God with empty hands, bow down before the throne of grace, and are ready to receive whatever blessing God chooses, we will be blessed. When we empty ourselves before God, he fills us with whatever we need. The blessings of this present time that deep fulfillment and satisfying inner joy that can be experienced now in the living of our lives is possible because of the promise, the promises to which the blessing is attached. The promise depends on a God who not only makes promises, but who can be trusted to keep them. Each and every day, brothers and sisters, we f are face to face with eternal choices. These choices begin in childhood and never end until life ends. Do we choose the easy way, the pleasure and profit for the moment? Are we willing to look ahead and sacrifice mom momentary gain for the greater good? The challenge of the Beatitudes is, will you be happy in the world's way or Christ's way? Jesus is saying, if you set your heart and spend your energies to obtain the things the world values, you will get them, but that's all you will ever get. We are not alone on our mission. Jesus is always with us. Also, we need each other. We need each other to remind us that we are blessed when we live life as if the love of God is the most important and most reliable reality in life. Satisfaction comes to those who are hurting for God's righteousness as revealed in the cross of Jesus. The person who is poor in spirit accepts his limitations and is not too proud to ask for help before he reaches the end of his rope. 
He leans heavily on the Lord and not on his own power and resources. That which the world rejects is precious in God's sight. Happiness comes from the inside out and not from the outside in. We can be happy when we make things right for a hungry world, to crave a world that is right and just, as often as intently as we crave food and drink. The blessings Jesus offers will come in the future because God keeps his promises. The blessings in this passage are not directed just to the oppressed or marginalized in society, but also to those who fight oppression, injustice, hunger, and poverty. Brothers and sisters, there are those who hunger and thirst from their rigorous climb for righteousness. The righteousness that they so intensely desire lies within their grasp. God wants to give it to them. The person who longs for righteousness is standing on the ridge right next to the pure in heart. Just as the pure in heart find their reward through surrender to Christ, those who hunger and thirst for it find the righteousness they seek through the same surrender. Because we have obtained and shall obtain mercy, we are even now free to be merciful. Because we shall see God, our hearts are even now purified by that promise. For purity of heart is to place our trust in God and God's promises, rather than our, in our own, make, our own striving. Because we are and shall be called children of God, we are now and in the moment God's peacemakers, called to be about the blessed work of reconciliation in our families, congregation, community, nation, and world. As children of God, we are called to make, to take after our Heavenly Father. Amen and Amen. Let us now profess our faith to God and our neighbor as it is summarized in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As our Savior Christ taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow after us, that we may continually be given to good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your servants, the martyrs of Papua New Guinea, boldness to confess the name of our Savior Jesus Christ before the rulers of this world, and courage to die for this faith. Grant that we may always be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us 
and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia! 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 Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the victory. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia! 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 Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia! 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 Sing with all the people of God, and join in the hymn of all creation. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia! 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 Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia! 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 For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia! This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We sing the praise of him who died, of him who died upon the cross. The sinner's hope, let sin deride, for this we count the world but loss. Inscribed upon the cross we see, in shining letters, God is love. He bears our sins upon the tree. 
He brings us mercy from above. The cross, it takes our guilt away and holds the fainting spirit up. It cheers with hope the gloomy day and sweetens every bitter cup. It makes the coward spirit brave and nerves the feeble arm for fight. It takes its terror from the grave and gilds the bed of death with light. The balm of life, the cure of woe, the measure and the pledge of love, the sinner's refuge here below, the angel's theme in heaven above. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And, we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power, working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>